Hello, welcome back to the MindTrek.net game server. I'm currently online with quite a few people, including Loki, Imheller, and a few of the uh, um, new um, people have joined the server since Imheller has updated it. I'm outside the Enterprise D today, taking a spin around her to see what she looks like. She's looking pretty good. I'll probably um, upload a little segment video here um, to this as well. I've uh, just uh, kind of flying around it and a little bit of music to it, but um, for the most part, yeah, we're coming through here. I'm checking out. This is some of the stuff that uh, Blue Phobes and I did. Excuse me, Blue Goblin and I did uh, a while back. Um, of course, it's been changed quite a bit since then. It's been reworked again. <sighs> Constant state of retrofitting. That's the that's the whole thing with the starship. It's always being retrofitted. I don't think the D will ever get done. Too much going on with her. But it is it is what it is. It's nice because right now she's separated out. M. Heller went through using MC Edit and raised all the decks so that uh you can you can kinda go between the ship and see the see where everything goes. You don't get the feel of the ship um this way, but at least you can see, you know, that uh it does have a pattern and um, it is ex completely explorable. Um, little areas like this and stuff like that have all been tweaked up and updated and come through here and it's a lot of fun actually to kind of fly around the D like this. What I used to like to do when I um, first got on the server and joined the servers back before a lot of this detail was added it was just walk along and try to find my way from like engineering all the way to the bridge by not using turbo lifts. <laughs> Can't be done. <laughs> I'm telling you, it cannot be done. Um, you have to use turbo lifts. That's the only way to get around this ship. So, well, that being said, let's spin on over to the Voy Voyager. You guys can read that shit. I, I don't read it. Usually, I just keep it off. And here we are back at the at the Voyager. M. Heller was just saying that he might Aztec this hull. Uh, yeah, go for it. I don't think it needs it, but if you want to spend the time and Aztec it, uh, that's your call. Um, uh, it's a little bit more work than I'd I'd really be willing to do myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you got the time and the methodology behind it, uh, you you always got my support. I got your back. Go for it, rocket, Aztec this bitch. Oh, there he is, speak of the devil. He's flying around like warp five. He's probably in here doing tweaks on the on the on the design on the uh, patterns and stuff like that because it is very time consuming. Uh what's he doing now? He's changing stair blocks. Oh god, please don't be doing it. I think you're gonna be doing him. Stair blocks on the D or, I mean, on the Voyager? No! Don't do it! Don't do it! No! I beg of you! No stair blocks, please! Please, no stair blocks! Good God, no! Ah! <laughs> no, the exterior is his call. Um, interior is pretty much, um... Well, actually, the interior is pretty much mapped out, so... Pff, apart from putting components and stuff in her and, uh... You know, tweaking this and that. She's the inside is you know ready for fit and finish or fitting out. So, anywho, um, yeah, it's a nice idea to contour the hull like that. If we had a lighter, lighter gray that's not so white, and, you know, it, it, we need a lot more options for colors to go. To be honest with you. I could just imagine if this whole ship was recolored using, um, you know, more than one, uh, or the limited palette that we have, it would really, really benefit from it. Like these grays, um, I'm sure if we had a color that was slightly less gray than this, that would be ideal for this. Unfortunately, we don't, so we get by with what we have. I don't know how he's going to do this with the underside patterns. He'll probably move these in by one. Uh, I don't know if he will or won't. It's uh, really up to him how he wants to do that. Otherwise, it'll be double patterned up here, and it'll look like um, it won't look so good. So his best bet would probably be to move him in by one. 
Uh, looks like he could do this outer edge for the most part, but the... I don't know how he's going to do it. I'll leave him to it. That's his call. Ooh, look at that, folks. He got that in. The NCC 74656 is in. Very cool. Very cool. I'm not sure what those things are. I should ask him. But these would benefit from having stairs. Oh, they are stairs. Outstanding. Never mind then. Never mind. Great minds think alike. There's the Aero Shuttle. And these are um, those things. Transporter thingamajiggies. Yeah, this deflector was pain in table pipe, but I'm glad she's in and done and reworked. That was a major undertaking, but I'm glad we did it because that really, really did enhance the haul. Um, I got it when I do more work from now on. I'm going to have to be very mindful. I'm going to, before I do anything, I'm going to really go over the 3D images to make sure that um, I see the detail that needs to be seen so that I don't repeat that error. That was a bitch and um, everything. And we still have to figure out the Sidonia 6 plans do not have this hatch, but the uh, Cygnus plans do, and the actual models do, and the 3D model did. So input it back in, but since we were using strictly Sidonia 6 plans, we didn't see it. So it kind of caused a bit of a snafu confusion um, between Anne, myself, and uh, uh, those who are working on this beautiful ship. But that was quickly sorted and sorted out and fixed. Ooh, what do we got here? Signs are always good. This vertical line do not have to match above. Do not modify. Okay. That being said, we can, uh, if I can remember what button to push, delete those. No sense having signs around that aren't needed anymore. They detect from the beauty that is Voyager. Yeah, this uh, this was one of those things when I was working on this. I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Because the 3D model was kind of flat and kind of scrunched up and things like that. So I had to uh, had to come up with a whole new way of um, making it look functional. Otherwise, it didn't look functional. It looked like it was just blocks trying to look like a circle. So a lot of work and stuff went into making this look functional. In fact, uh, somebody was joking around that we ought to, you know, angle it up. Well, you can try. <laughs> I'm not going to try. No. I think looking flat is fine. Try to angle it up into flight mode or warp mode, and you're just going to make it look like shit. Um, but, yeah, you can do whatever you want, you know, but I wouldn't do it. Mm -mm, no. No, 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 no. We even have a light. Ah. Uh, why would somebody put ice there? It's stupid. This. It's an airlock. It doesn't have to have a force field. That's what this door here is. There's a door here. You hit the button, you step in, you hit the button, the door opens, you go out. Airlock! Derp! Um, yeah, I was going to come through here and finish this up, see what we got for signs. Shuttle Bay Force Field Generation Room. Well, that would be correct. Uh, airlock Subsystems Room. Very cool. That's the uh, very system we were just talking about, as a matter of fact. Hey, like my little work table. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. Oh, that's it. Uh, what we got here? Shuttle Fabrication Pressurization Room. Well, we got part of the fabricator right here, and this is part of the mass fabricator. Whoa, that was weird. Oh, there's a force field here. I thought I panic fixed that so it wasn't making this ugly ass noise. Maybe I'm on the wrong RP pack. I'm pretty sure I'm on the right one, though. It's the one he sent me. I got my big cross. Well, I don't have my big cross. Yeah, I do have my big cross there. I just don't have it turned on. Uh, get rid of that. We don't need it anymore. Get rid of that. We don't need it anymore. Uh, get rid of that. We don't need it anymore. But I'm gonna turn gamma bright off. Woo! It got dark fast. Ah. All right. What happened to all my lights? Somebody had some more shit up there. No, those are pretty much the way I'm set up. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Well, it works for me. I like it. I like it dark. It'll work. 
we need more light in here, we'll figure something out later. Got a few people on here, uh, this isn't Voyager from the show. It doesn't look anything like Voyager from the show. Uh, cause that show is a set piece, and it's not an actual 3D model. It's just a couple of, uh, you know, rooms that are made out of paper and plywood, and, uh, um, yeah, it's a set. This is the actual ship, and if they had the money, the sets would look like this. Durr. <sighs> and I, if you want to talk about canon, Star Trek V. Let's talk canon. That elevator scene where Kirk and McCoy and Spock have just been freed from the brig by Scotty, and they run down the down the whatever that thing is, Jeffrey's circle tube thingy, and Scotty knocks himself out, and all right, well, cool. Uh, and next thing you see, they're at the bottom of a turbo shaft, presumably on deck one. <laughs> <laughs> and then they proceed to use a rocket pack to fly to deck 50 whatever 900 you know um yeah there you go enough said deck one by the way is the bridge or deck a is the bridge on the enterprise a uh not the bottom of the ship because the ship's not that big but Bill Shatner, being Bill Shatner, didn't listen. And instead, he made one of the most iconic fuck-ups in film history. And that fuck-up is known as Star Trek V. The Final Frontier. Does anybody even remember the Klingon that was in that? The bad, the, the bad Klingon? All I remember for that movie is the bad visual effects, the bad <laughs> continuity issues, the shit writing. The only thing I really liked about it was the laughing Vulcan, which I thought was kind of interesting. Oh, and I like the hand phasers. Love the hand phasers. Those are pretty cool. Actually, I got a couple of those. So, anyways, this is the uh, bridge. A uh, bridge. <laughs> this is the engineering deck. Um, Mad Squirrel, um, I panic, and I really, really went to town in here setting this baby up. It came out very, very good. Um, M. Heller, of course, came through and did his finalization stuff to it, and, uh, and I'm going to leave that there so that way they can be monitored. What the hell is a tricyclic waste heat monitor? Anybody know what a tricyclic waste heat monitor is? I sure as hell don't know what a tricyclic waste heat monitor is. I don't know. Uh, uh. Let me see what else we got on this deck. Probably nothing. I think this is a deck below the one we are just on, so... Hello. Ooh. Sandstone. Uh, coolant tanks bay upper. Yes, let's go ahead and hit camera bright. These are coolant tanks. These might be swapped out. Actually, no, these are pretty close to what they look like in the plans. And the bay is designed for these. So I think we'll just go ahead and keep these in here. It's kind of dumb, though. I sh what I'd love to do is I'd like them bump this catwalk back one and actually make these things a little bit taller. I, um, but then it means this catwalk could have to be against this wall, and we could redesign this room to do that. But right now, the way it's designed is according to the deck plans. Uh, I'm gonna run it by M. Heller because I would really like. Uh, to me, this is a lot of wasted space up here. I'd like to extend these tanks. Plus, we also have to come up with a way to get the tanks from there to this door. Uh, so we'll probably have to put a like a sliding system or door system in here and they can't actually the tanks can be no bigger than this right here because this is all one door so why don't we make the tanks that big and just have catwalks working their way around them I don't know it's I think it was just a, just a, a blueprint flaw to only have them you know one deck tall so but you know I could be wrong I could be very wrong but I would like to rework this area a little bit so that these tanks could be taller or at least have a second set of tanks but I don't know, they'd be smaller and yeah, it'd just be better to extend these. And then we could probably fit the nice tanks that uh, uh, Mad Squirrel designed for the Defiant and the uh, in here as well. I don't know. I don't know. Food for thought for future design work. Food for thought. What oh, we got here? This says deflector alignment maintenance. This used to say head. I changed that. This is not a bathroom. No. Bathrooms on a starship are never this big. Screw that. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. No heads are. This could be a head, but.
but it's a secondary deflector sensor monitoring. Um, I'm not really sure how to implement this room. I'm being honest with you guys. I'm not really sure how we're going to implement this. Um, but I'm sure we will figure something out. To be honest with you, I've, I've kind of stepped back from this build um, for a while uh, as to avoid burnout and frustrations and things like that. But um, see, this is a head. Toilet, sink. That's a head. Um, port side tanks. Again, this awesome forward cargo or engineering cargo bay with. Uh, I love how him did this. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, that's very cool. Very cool indeed. Well done. Well done. That is that is very cool. <laughs> love it. <laughs> All right, Am. Good job. Good job on that. He also widened this out. Uh, this on the plans was a access corridor, kind of a. It, 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 none of us liked it the way it was. We were like, eh, you know, we should widen this out. And well, the plans say it's only so thick. All right, well, we'll keep it as according to the plans, and then later we'll come back and we'll visit extending it. And um, Impeller actually came through and says, yeah, <laughs> this is going to get fixed. And he fixed it. So that's, you know, this is this is where teamwork really comes into place. We were all on the same page and the we all know how it's supposed to look and you know we don't make the sudden changes until everybody signs off on it and then M signed off on it. What done? Uh, you know it, it's just yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do with these things. But you know these are of course navigational computers and then this room here is computer access area and then we got a sign over here that says something. Let's go read it. Emergency life support systems. Cool, and I even actually have the component that will be the emergency life support system. I've been working on components off the side as well. Those get tedious, let me tell you. I make, I make up a basic part, and then anybody's free to alter it any way they want, um, as long as it's generally the same, I guess. But um, a lot of the ideas I get, I, I borrow from uh, the deck plans and from other things other people have done, like Mad Squirrel, I panicked bomb, impeller himself. Uh, actually, let's go check a look at our deflector room here. As you can see, the deflector room is really neat looking. I, we figured that it, since this room has these these uh, these specialized equipment in it for generating a slipstream drive, um, it needed a little. It needed some, you know, shielding because slipstream drive and all that stuff. So we shielded it from the rest of the ship. The other side of the bottom of the ship doesn't matter. Those guys can get radioactive. Sensor system above slipstream running access, length of bay, yeah, that's all done. Sensor system connect down to deflector. Uh, that's actually handled, I believe, inside of the wall up there. But we can make it look, I mean, it, it, why, tile, why over tile this room, or excuse me, over tile this room with unneeded pipes and stuff? Most of that stuff would be hidden in the walls. Um, I believe it is actually hidden, fed directly into it. It doesn't need to be fed into this system here it's actually fed in behind this wall so we can route all that stuff up behind these walls there's plenty of room up there so we might as well do it up there um, but yeah this is actually a, a M. Hiller edition the glass is actually there it'll be removed um, but it, it shows the route of the uh, power line to the uh, to the system here and um, again the power for the deflector is provided forward uh, and we actually have the lines going forward to this system up here below the deck. If you go down one deck, you'll see them routed to it. So everything's routed. We have power to where power needs to be. All these will be replaced. Um, I added a little hatchway here so we can get down below. Um, but you can see everything's got its routes and everything else. The blue is only temporary. Um, I extended this out. I'm going to probably um, extend this here, make this uh, so we can get around this part here. In fact, um, I'm going to do that right now while I'm thinking about it, um, if I can remember the right one. Because this is just like a little, you know, uh, science place, so it doesn't need, you know, it doesn't really need all this space in here. So, I can shorten this base size so down on this side. It doesn't matter because this is just like a little, you know, parts room anyway, so I'm trying to gamma right against me and see what we're doing. Um, and then, of course, we have this little point here. Now, I thought about actually just turning this into a corridor and having it come in here to this door here. To me, that looked better than having it this way. So that's what I'm going to do here. 
is I'm just going to make this into a little teeny side corridor to this room because it makes more sense and then having it out here where it looks kind of funky you know and come around in here and this is too small to use and it needs to be this way for the shape of the room to be the way it is so we're not going to worry about this. This stuff here you know imagine it as just being you know uh, whatever you know if we had like little blocks we could lift up and stick little trans circuits and things in there to be worked on but currently Minecraft doesn't have that so we don't but now they can get to this side of the of the tube and everything else and what I'll do is when it comes over to this point here these will probably branch up and over so that you can actually walk under it to the door so it'd be something like uh, something like this you know so you can just walk under it so these pipes will actually be above us and um, make sure I get the placement right here yeah. it'll actually be above us the whole point you know, at two high and then one high, and in some cases there might even be something down here, which would be a different, you know, power speed system. My nose it's just I apologize. So this way here we can get around the room and to all the systems that need to be um, serviced and stuff like that. So uh, this is EPS distribution room. That's exactly what she is. EPS distribution room. Um, hmm. I don't know. I really don't want to move this wall back. Um. I don't think I, I don't think it would benefit us to move that wall back. So I'm gonna because you can get to it from 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 like right here and stuff. So I don't, I'm not gonna move that wall back. I think that wall should stay right where it is. But I do want to be able to get up here. This was kind of vital because this is you know where Jeffrey's access point is, and it also goes into the uh, deflector room. So I think that was a good call on our part to do that that way and leave the rest of the wall there. This is batteries. That's great floor, black floor. So it's probably batteries. So actually, let's take a check here. I'm pretty sure it is batteries. Yep, batteries. So we got our emergency transporter, crew transporter here, and of course that's also up on deck two or three, whichever it is. Um, let's come back down here. Yeah, we've been in there, so let's we'll find something else to get into. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's take a Jeffrey's tube up a couple of decks here. I don't want to go into the torpedo room. I'm really frustrated with that right now, so I'm going to stay away from it. It frustrates me. Don't ask why, it just does. Um, but just to show you that it's here, here it is. Torpedo room. The bane of my current existence of Star Trek. Too many frelin torpedoes. Those aren't needed anymore. All the power and everything else for the rail system is all handled through the internal systems. Again, they come up through here and power these. Um, you don't have to see everything, you know, like you don't have to, oh my god, there's no power connecting to this. Well, you know, they're not going to leave the lines laying out in the open. It's all going to be like in the decks, you know, this one meter thick block here. It'll all be inside of this stuff. You know, that's, you know, that's why they call it deck plating. You know, if we could cover it up with like a hatch and then have like, like a half slab under here that shows the power routes, that would be ideal for everything. So, you don't have to see all this crap, you know. This, of course, is coolant lines, but if it were power, it would be handled inside of the deck plating, just like you do in a clean room, or even on a submarine is another good example. You just lift the deck up, and all your pipes and power lines are right there, and you have this grating that goes over the top of them. Same thing with a starship. You don't have to have all these lines everywhere. So that's why you don't see power lines everywhere, and unless the system specifically calls for it, um... You're not gonna, you know. I, I would say, don't worry about it. Don't, don't, don't overcomplicate the look of the room by adding way too much crap that just gets in the way. There is a point at which you add way too much shit, and that, that really does detach from, from the build. So just be mindful of that when you're building. Too much sometimes is too much. Sometimes too much is too little. You never know. It just really depends. Well, actually, it goes out this way. Yeah, here's the great cargo bay. Um, that's cargo transfer area, and this is the cargo bay for... I'm glad this got sorted out. I mean, 
7 and 9, you know, because of the show, it all had to be sorted out. And I'm glad it got sorted out because that's where the gore gets spit out of the ship. So, and this all, I think I panicked and um, M. Heller figured this mess out. And God bless him for doing it because I sure as hell couldn't have. And I don't, I wouldn't have spent the time to do it. It's like, fuck it. It's done. Don't like it. Screw it. Again, we haven't done much on the interior spaces because we're we're still in limbo as to what's going on overall with the outside stuff. So, and I haven't been really putting a lot of time into the build because I just just don't want to burn out. So, I figure hands off for a while. I allow myself to decompress. I'll help um, Mad and Panic on their builds and hopefully get some of those things moved further down the road to completion. Uh, now that M. Heller has updated his server to uh, 1710, and we've been getting influx of a lot of new players, and hopefully some of them will work out for us and stick around to become, you know, like you know, like Mad Squirrel worked out, Panic worked out, I worked out, um, of course Lupus and others have all worked out as well. Stick around and help us build. Uh, we got to really avoid the um, cheese builds and the derp builds. Uh, not derp is in we having fun, but derp is in deliberate dumbass builds. Uh, builds like builds. Um, that's from changing stuff on the hall. It looks like um, derps that uh, you know. You like my starship, and it's like not even a starship. It's like some taxi thing that they saw and they turned it into a spaceship, and it just looks like shit. Oh wait, that's a derp, isn't it? <laughs> no, we're talking quality builds, not not um, people that give their best and it still looks like crap. And you know, we want people that can do things like this stuff. You know, use available space smartly. I could never have thought this up in a million years. I well, I mean, I could try, but I guarantee you, it would not look this good. And look at it. Look at this. This is the kind of detail that Matt is known for. And um, people can demonstrate this kind of level. And, you know, granted, you know, Matt's got the benefit of being on the server and working with this stuff for a while. Um, but still, you know, if you anybody can come on here and demonstrate one-tenth of this level, you'll probably gain build rank really fast. I mean, that's how I got my build ranks, how I Panic got his, Matt got his, the Bomb earned his, you know. Um, as far as the cadet builds go, you know, just give it your best shot. You be your own judge. If you think it's good, you know, go back over it, review it, and, and just put your all into it. Because it really, that is where we judge you. And if you can't, um, if you won't, if you won't pay attention to the little details in a little 4x4 four four rooms, um, section rooms, or grid, whatever they call that, I think 16 by 16 uh, four of them, then you're not going to pay attention to these big builds. You're going to have it. It'll be an epic fail, and we won't trust you. And the whole point of the cadet build is you showing us that you are trustworthy by doing good work without being supervised. And once you do your cadet plot, you're given an ensign plot, which means you take a ship, a very small ship, and you deck it out. You build it. And, you know, and that is where the real challenge is. And we have found that that's where we're burning out most of our ensigns is there. Because... I'm going to be up honest with you, you know, iPanic is extremely tough on those. He really is. He he, he has no mercy for, for for weak designs, you know. he There are enough good examples around this server that there should be no half-ass efforts on those builds. And if you think it's a good build and you think you've done a good job and you think iPanic's done you wrong, going to the forums and whining about it isn't the way to do it. You know, best bet is... You know, take it to 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 myself, and I'll go look at it, and I'll talk to him. But I'll guarantee you, if if Panic says it's shit, it's shit. You know, I have never countered him on any of that because he's done a really he's he's very good at attention to detail like that. So you know, just be mindful that if if you whine about it and you whine to me and I back him up, you're just gonna look you're gonna look really really sad. You know, so I, you know, take what he tells you. If you don't understand, um, try to try to improve it and keep working on it because uh, he's been around all these builds. I mean, look, look, he helped on the C, he's helped on the B, the A, the TOS, this thing, and God knows how many other builds. So 
if he says you know you got to work on it you got to work on it you know if it looks a little plain Jane or if you don't understand where he wants you to go um, step back from the build for a bit go fly around look at some of the other builds gain an idea of how they were done and don't emulate them block for block because you'll see it but you know try to make your own take on it and you guaranteed you'll be you'll be amazed at what you could pull off um, just for fun sometimes we'll redesign an, an area just just to see how well we can do it and redo it and redo it and redo it because we all get lazy and laziness is the bane of our existence here I mean it's so easy to get burned out so easy to fall into a rut um, that you're constantly like we'll build up an area and then we'll leave it and then we'll come back to it and rework it and then we'll leave it and we'll come back to it and rework it and then we'll leave it like this room here is far from being done and it's been a rework two or three times now but it's getting there and it will keep getting there eventually I'll have roof, uh, roof webbing going through here to kinda give this area a lot more depth and dimension to it instead of this big open spot with the floor above it and that's something I learned on the Nova build you know I just haven't gotten this far yet. We're still working on some of this internal stuff and things like that to get it all situated and looking good. One small step at a time, but we are getting there. And that's the same thing with the cadet builds and the ensign builds. You know, just work it, go back, give yourself some time, go back to it, see if there's anything else you can do that's better. Don't half-ass it, don't be lazy with it. It's very important if you aren't going to take the time to do the effort or put the effort into doing a good job with those especially with the cadet build uh, you sure as hell are not going to get promoted and bugging eye panic about it is just going to get you banned uh, you know we don't suffer and pay we don't suffer impatience well here or stupidity keep that in mind um, M. Heller is extremely busy and the fact that he runs this server and keeps the server up to date is you know by his grace and you know so don't bug him because he'll just like he'll tell you pretty much to go pound sand or take it up with iPanic and you know for people who like to come on here and whine and boohoo you know about how things are unfair all that does is just tell us how old you are and we're sorry but we're not babysitters and we'll just give you a timeout and then if you keep it up you can go play in somebody else's sandbox that's how it works but if you do have good suggestions and you find flaws I don't care who you are if you find something really funky wonky and you think it's kinda buzzy weird or whatever you want to call it uh, please bring it to my attention um, I have I've ran into problems before where somebody says hey um, you got this big open space here but no door what no way sure enough you know and it was it was just a cadet and uh, actually it was a tracky guy excuse me wasn't he, he wasn't even a cadet at the time he came through was on the sea and he found seven or eight things that had been walled in um, because of miscommunication with brain uh, that had been walled in that shouldn't have been walled in and I didn't catch him and he did and I don't remember the guy's name but I think it I want to I, I don't remember his name um I don't even want to guess because I'd probably get it wrong and somebody else get the credit for this guy's work and I don't want to do that It'd be unfair to him but yeah he was just a Trekkie and he found it and sure enough you know I don't know who that is but um yeah Sensor subsist OD injunction. Yeah, OD injunctions. Eh? My head's turned sideways at the moment as I'm trying to contemplate what the hell an OD injunction is going to look like. Uh, gel pack relay breaker box. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be a gel pack relay breaker box. That's the new definition of ODN. Gel pack relay breaker box. Ooh, I wanted to check this out while we were here. Um, we're working on these, trying to sort these, these, this mess out. The, look at this. I, I think this is going to be the way we're going to go. I mean, the bomb did a really nice job through here setting this up. There's not a lot to work with through here. Um, that's my fault. Don't blame my own bomb for that. Um, so yeah, you know, we 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 do what we can, but I, I think this will be okay. Um, for down here, anyways, it looks good. You get to feel that you're in a tight com compressed area. Um, goes all the way around. Of course, this is not in the actual deck plans. This is something M. Heller and I added. Um, him actually, M. Heller suggested it, and I, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> so we went in and put it in there. So you got a little catwalk that comes up over this thing, Majiggy, and then back out the door. So, anywho, um, this has just been a kind of a server playthrough walk around of the uh, Voyager with a little bit of the D in it. 
Um, as more of the D gets done, more and more videos will start to focus on the D. Um, hopefully, I think Loki Rosano, if I pronounce, I just call him Loki. Uh, if Loki's going to stick around for a while, hopefully he'll start getting some video uh, videos up as well of D work and things like that. Um, I've heard Blue Phobes wants to try his hand at making some videos too. Uh, he made one really great video about the um, issue with the D back um, six, seven months ago. That was really good. Uh, so hopefully he can get around to doing some more videos. Anywho, I uh, greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch, and I hope to see you soon on the uh, MindTrack.net game server. Have a great day. Bye-bye.